Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Oh my God, it is a beautiful night in Miami. It is like, we just passed somewhere and the temperature <laughs> was um, on the building as we passed it, as we were walking back from dinner and it said 76 degrees. It's 76 degrees in Miami right now. It's so nice outside. We just got back and it is 10.42 p.m. Alex is getting ready for bed and he is going to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> we both stayed up very, very late last night. Didn't plan on it, but we did. Um, and I am sleeping so well here. I'm still taking my medicine and it still takes a while to work, but um, when I do fall asleep, like I'm out. And I wake up and I'm just like, oh my God, like I had the best sleep ever. The bed is so comfortable here. And I'm just like sleeping so well. And I think also like, you know, like every, I'm like, I'm a light sleeper. So like when Boo gets up and he like moves in the middle of the night, like I, I get up and then I go to the bathroom and I come back to bed and I go back to sleep. So I wake up, you know, if I have like a nightmare or something, but here I haven't at all. And so I'm sleeping really, really well. I know I'll sleep well tonight because I am so, I just feel so content and so relaxed today. <clears throat> we were up by the uh, the rooftop pool here. That's kind of how we've been ending our days. We go to the beach and then we go to the rooftop pool. Well, first we started, I think I said this in a vlog yesterday or the day before, but we've been going to the downstairs pool, but there's like families and tons of kids. It's very loud down there. So the rooftop pool is like adults only. There's like a restaurant attached to it. And when we, like, yesterday and today, there was hardly anybody there. I think today when we went up there, we went up there about 4.30. It wasn't like super, super nice today, which is so funny because I got so much sunset you guys love. Like my shoulders are absolutely burnt. And, um, but it was cloudy, but you know you get a lot of sun when it's cloudy out. And so we went up there about 4.30, and I think there, like, I mean, it was like literally like every six or eight chair there was somebody sitting in. Maybe not even that. There's probably only like four couples around the pool. The pool's pretty big up there. And um, there was like two other people in the pool when we got in the pool. But we got out there. We have like, <laughs> on the beach today when we went down there, Alex went down there ahead of me. And um, I was like getting my stuff together. So he was like, okay, I'll get the chairs. And I got down there. And so I got in the water, you know, right away he got in the water. And then we came back and we were sitting in the chairs. And I was like listening. So I've been listening to The Firm all day today. Because I'm, I'm like, I have to finish this book, The Firm. Because... I picked two books for Peter's Book Club for March, and I haven't finished The Firm, which is the first one. The second one is the sequel, The Exchange, which just came out, but it's shorter. The Firm, the original one, is like on Audible. It's like 17 hours, but I listened to it at like two times five speed or six speed or something like that. It's still like, you know, I think maybe even slower than that. So it's like seven or eight hours of listen time. It's not as good as I remember it being. I think I said that last night, but it's getting better now. Um, I think I only ever saw the movie like one time with Tom Cruise and I don't really remember the movie. I remember, um, what's her face? Holly Hunter. I love Holly Hunter. She's like one of my favorite actresses in life. I remember her being, I think she plays Lomax's secretary in it that like works with him. And I like, and didn't Tom Cruise end up marrying the woman that plays Abby, his wife in the movie in real life? or now. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't really remember the movie that well, but I, re I can, like, see a scene where they're, like, looking at paperwork and Holly Hunter's, like, standing over his shoulder. I don't know why I remember that. I also keep on thinking Susan Sarandon was in the movie, but she was actually in the movie The Client, which was a fantastic movie. I don't know if I ever read that book. I think I did. I read most of John Grisham's books back in the day, like, when I was reading all of them, like, whatever was out, I read back then, like, from, like, when I got sober, I would, like, pick an author, and I would, like, read everything, like, when I was in treatment, I was real into Michael Crichton, so I read, like, every Michael Crichton book, and for years, until he passed away, I, like, absolutely loved Michael Crichton, which is interesting, because I never watched ER, which I think he was one of the original writers for ER, the TV show, and Alex is watching Grey's Anatomy. He was like, I guess it came out last night or something. He was like, I haven't watched The Bachelor yet. So he was watching Grey's Anatomy earlier, catching up on it. I haven't watched the finale of The Bachelor yet, but Caroline and I were texting about it. So I already know the spoiler that I, I read and did a video about was true. And I already know that the new Bachelorette is Jen, which I kind of thought it might be her anyway. I mean, I like her. She's okay. I was kind of hoping that Daisy would be the Bachelorette. 
I think they probably propositioned Daisy to be The Bachelorette, and then she decided not to be, but I can save that for a, a, a reality TV channel video. So I have that to catch up on, I have Vanderpump Rules to catch up on, and I have The Valley to catch up on. Alex is actually, he said he wasn't going to watch The Valley, but he watched it last week. It's so interesting because, who is texting me? Somebody is texting me right now. I was texting with, um, I don't know if you guys know the YouTuber, Zachary Michael, but he's a friend of mine. He's always been so supportive of me. And, um, it's kind of nice to be friends with another person that does, like, what I do, but, like, in a completely different realm. Like, he doesn't do, like, the same videos that I do or whatever. But his dog passed away this weekend. His dog, Judy, that was in his videos. And so I was texting him, just sending some love and support and stuff like that. He's such a nice guy. Um, probably one of the smartest people I've ever met since doing YouTube. No, in all honesty, like, really smart guy. And, um, but anyway... I saw on Twitter that his dog had passed away, put out a thing, and so I was texting him, and he said something about, he did a live stream today, he's like, I just can't sit around anymore, I don't know what to do, he's like, so I did a live stream, I was like, I totally get it, you know, it's like, I don't know, losing a pet is so hard, isn't it, I feel so bad for him, so anyway, um, what was I talking about, I was talking about the firm, oh, but Alex watched The Valley last week, oh, this was going to say, about the valley and i'll do a whole video about this on my reality tv channel but when i made the video about it like the comments were completely split like a lot of people were like they really liked the valley <laughs> like i hated the valley and they which is the spinoff of vanderpump rules with Jax taylor and Brittany and kristen Doty and her new boyfriend luke who they none of them like this luke i actually thought he was nice i think he's like the nicest guy that kristen Doty's ever dated but anyway I didn't love the show, but I think it's going to be like one of those shows I'll maybe like grow to love. I don't know, but somebody had a comment on my video and they're like, well, good thing you don't have to watch it anymore. I'm like, it sat in there. I was going to watch it to do reviews on it. I, it was, it just was boring. It wasn't what I expected at all. I don't know. And like, I, Alex and I were talking about it. It's like, Jax Taylor makes for great television, but he's just not, like, a really nice person, and he doesn't even treat his wife very well, obviously, and, like, when you watch The Valley, it's like, he hasn't changed at all since years ago when Vanderpump rules, so it's, like, really hard to watch that, and he said a lot of, kind of, like, really horrible things on the show, and, like, just very questionable things, so anyway, I'm not, like, really quick to catch up with that, I actually... Alex was like, he's like, I'm going to bed early. So we went to dinner tonight. Um, I'm like telling this whole vlog and kind of reverse, but we walked to Lincoln Road tonight and I was like, what do you want for dinner? And he's like, I want pasta. And I said, okay, will you pick, because there's like a million pasta places on Lincoln Road's like all these restaurants in a row. <clears throat> there's actually this ice cream store <clears throat> on Lincoln Road. I don't know if it's like TikTok famous or something, but there's like a line outside the door. And I really want to go there. I actually put it on my Instagram story because they have these like ice cream bars there. So I went in and I took a video of the flavor, flavors, and the flavors are like, they just like look like ice cream bars. This ice cream place, like, I mean, there's like a line all the way out. I mean, at 10 o'clock at night. We just walked by there 20 minutes ago, <clears throat> and there was <clears throat> a bigger line than when we came at like 8.30. So, yeah, I'm like, I, I told Alex, I said, we can skip ice cream. And then... Hagen dazs is right around the corner, and so I was like really craving ice cream, and so I was like, I don't eat ice cream as much anymore. I buy like I'll do review like hauls, and I'll buy some things, you know, every once in a while. But then I like I'll I'll like do a review of it and try one of them, and then I don't really eat the rest of it. I'm not like even in the summer. The only time I look really like an ice cream person is like Alex and I both get ice cream and we watch a movie. And that's usually when I get like a pint of like Ben and Jerry's chubby hubby or which is hard to find somebody actually sent me a picture the other day that they found it i love these are the kind of dms that i, I get and i love these dms from people that are like oh my god i found chubby hubby and um so yeah somebody sent me a dm last night about a new show on stars called the missing this is where you guys influence me okay and i don't know if she wants to get called out or not but she comments on all my videos and she sends me dms all the time she's real sweet so i don't know if she wants to get like shouted out or not so i won't say her name but anyway she sends me dms a lot 
She's real sweet. And so she was like, this new show is really good. It's kind of like, sounds like a Harlan Coben show. It's called, but it's on Stars. And so, I don't know why we used to have Stars with our cable, but we don't anymore. Alex and I was like, we just need to get rid of the cable. I was like, no. <clears throat> I don't know why. I'm like the landline phone. Like, I cannot get rid of cable. We made so many deals with the cable company to keep cable. Like, they will keep it. They will, you can literally throw $30 at them and they'll be like, sure, you know, whatever. So anyway, but our cable is expensive, actually. And we have every streaming service in the world and everything like that. So anyway, she messaged me and I was like, where can I find this? show the missing and she said because apparently has a lot of like english actors that are really good in it and she said um uh, it's on stars and she said but i just bought like the app like if you get on amazon prime there's like all these add-ons like i have like the true crime add-on that's like a dollar 99 or 3.99 a month or something like that i think i've seen them there's like four they don't add very many new documentaries on there there's like four or five series that i still want to watch and once i've watched those i'm gonna like get rid of it i'm not gonna renew it anymore Tanya has like the BBC one because she loves all those shows. Like, Broad Church. I mean, I'm just making that up. Broad Church. What's the one that everybody. <clears throat> Downton Abbey. Tanya loves shows like Downton Abbey. Like, she's obsessed with it. She loves to read novels like that. So, she got like the BBC ad on and she watches all the shows on the BBC. But anyway, so. Uh, someone sent me this message and she was like. Um, I. She said it's on Stars, and she's like, I bought the Stars add-on because right now, for the next three months, you can get three months for a dollar ninety. Not who else is texting me? I never get any texts, and I oh, Nikki's texting me. Um, it never or for three months, it's like a dollar ninety nine or three ninety nine, and that goes up to nine ninety nine a month. Well, there's actually a lot of shows on Stars that I've wanted to see, and we haven't had it forever. We used to have it with cable. I don't know why we don't anymore. So last night I got the stars. <laughs> One more thing that we have, you know. I'm like, you know, I used to, this is my mindset now with like spending and stuff like that. I'm like, I used to go to the casino at least two to three times a month, right? And I haven't been since September. This is going out of focus. It is going out of focus, hold on. It's because all the lights behind me. And I don't have like a brighter shirt on today. That's why I wore that pink shirt last night. Um, I actually bought this shirt for Ultra last year. I think I got it at Target or something like that. And it was like skin tight on me. I was telling Alex tonight at dinner. I like had to stretch it out. So, look at this shirt. It's like so baggy on me. So anyway. So that feels good that this shirt fits. But anyway. So of course I like buy stars like that. But anyway. What was I saying? I don't know. Oh, that's what I was saying. Like, that's kind of in my head how I justify stuff. I'm like, well, I was spending the money going to the casino at least twice a month, you know? I don't ever go to the casino anymore, so, you know, if I want to buy stars, I'll buy stars. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, you know? So, anyway, um, but today was a good day. We got up. I did not get down to the pool at noon. So, my plan was to get down to the pool, or get down to the beach. We don't, we go to the pool later in the day. We don't, like, to, that's how we end our day. We always go to the beach. I don't really understand it. Like, I have a lot of friends of mine that are, like, pool people. Tanya is definitely a beach person. Caroline's definitely a beach person. Most people that I know are, like, beach people. I think maybe it's coming from the Midwest. I don't know. But, like, when you have an opportunity to be near the beach, I don't understand why you would opt for the pool over the beach. I don't get it. Like, I just, it doesn't make it, I mean, at least for part of the day, you know? And the beach down here is beautiful. The water is crystal clear. I mean, it was like crashing waves and stuff today, but it was perfect temperature. It was really nice and stuff like that. And we got out in there and, and played in it for a little bit, a couple times. So anyway, um, last night I filmed a vlog, which ended up being like 50 minutes or something long. It was a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I was going to actually film that review video and I didn't end up doing that. I wasn't going to even film a vlog tonight. I was just like, no, I'll just wait till I get, you know, home and start filming again once I get home. But we got back from dinner so early, I thought we would be gone longer. Alex was like falling asleep at dinner tonight. He's so tired, poor guy. I feel so bad for him. Um, I laid down when we got back from the pool for a little bit. I didn't really fall asleep, but I like laid down. The bed is so comfortable. So, um, and I love coming back to the room when like the, you know, the bed has been made and like they like clean the room and all that kind of, I, that's like one of my favorite things in the entire world. I love staying in hotel rooms. I love, love, love staying in hotel rooms. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were like, I said something like, what's something about you that I wouldn't know? And they were like, I love hotel rooms. Like, I love to stay in hotel rooms. I don't care if it's a motel room. I don't care if it's a hotel room. I love hotel rooms. I'm like, oh my god, I love hotel rooms too. I always have ever since I was a kid. I've loved hotel rooms. 
So anyway, um, I feel like I'm like out here. Oh my god, I was talking to Tanya on the phone and I said something about sitting on the porch and she started laughing. She goes, you mean the balcony? And I go, oh my god, I said that in my vlog. So anyway, um, so, oh shoot. I just, I've been drinking this Diet Dr. Pepper. Like, I opened it when we got back from the pool at like 5.30. There, clean that off. <laughs> it's a little bit small. And then um, I put it in the refrigerator and then I got it back out when I was getting ready and got up for my nap. And then I put it back in the refrigerator and then I just pulled it out. There's like this much left in it. <laughs> I'm trying to make it last, you know? So anyway, um, oh, so last night I got done with the vlog. I started uploading it. The internet here is really fast. And so like the night before when I uploaded the vlog, it took me like 20 minutes to upload it. And it was like 40 minutes long. And I was like, oh, the internet's fantastic here, it's so quick. Well, last night, I mean, it's never, it has a lot to do with YouTube too. It doesn't have a lot to do necessarily with Wi-Fi. Last night when I uploaded it, I started uploading it and said two hours and like 45 minutes, 54 minutes or something like that. I was like, I cannot stay up three hours. I was like, I'll just post it tomorrow morning when I get up, you know, whatever time I get up. So I was thinking I would get up like at 11 o'clock. Now, mind you, I thought it was like 12 o'clock, 1230 when I got done vlogging last night because I didn't really look at my phone. So while I was uploading, I watched... I talked on the phone. Who did I talk to last night? I can't remember. I talked on the phone for a little bit. And then I started watching the last episode of Fellow Travelers. And then once that was done, which was like an hour, I think it was an hour and seven minutes. Cause I was like, how long is this? And I looked, it was an hour and seven minutes. When that got done, the vlog was still not done. So I had to wait like another 20 minutes. And then it was done. And then I looked at my phone and I was like, it was like 3.15. And I was like, what is going on? Well, Alex, like when I started vlogging, said he was going to bed. And that was at like, I don't know, like 12 or one. I don't remember what time it was. But anyway, what time did we get home last night? It wasn't super late. So anyway, I like, like once I went to the bathroom and he wasn't like asleep yet, but I didn't really think it was that late. Well, when I looked at my phone and it was 3.15 and I went in there and he's like still looking at TikToks, I go, oh my God, you are up this late. I thought you were going to bed. He was like, what time is it? And I go, it's 3.15. I go, like he's literally on his phone, right? I go, it's 3.15. He was just at 3.15 and I go, yeah. He goes, oh my God, I wanted to get up early and go to the beach tomorrow early and stuff like that. So anyway, so we went to bed and I got up today. I think it was like, like 11.30 or 12. I mean, it was, no, 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 that was just, what time did I get up? Yesterday I slept in. I think it was like 12.31, something like that. I don't know what time it was. 1.30, I don't and No, it wasn't that late. Because I sat out here for a while. I got some coffee and I sat out here for a while and talked on the phone and called some people and checked in. And it was real cloudy when I got up. So I was like, well, maybe I'll film a couple videos and then go down to the beach because it was real cloudy. It looked like it was gonna rain. The weather is supposed to like every day, it looks like it's supposed to rain. You know, down here, like the whole time we've been down here, it's like every day they say it's gonna rain. So I was like, it's not gonna be that nice. And I was just like, no, it's gonna be nice. Like on the water, like it looks cloudy here, but like on the beach, I'm like, now that's true sometimes, but I'm like, we're literally, I mean, I can see the beach right down here, right? Like I can see the ocean. I'm like pointing to the ocean right now. It's right there. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> you can see, you can see, there's the pool and there's the beach right there, <laughs> okay? So anyway, so I'm like, well, he can go down. And so that's, oh, that's why I said you can go down first. Sounds like I kind of taking my time or whatever. Because I was not convinced. I was like, I think it's going to rain or whatever. Well, I finally got myself together and then I went to the coffee shop and I got a coffee and I went to the beach. Well, it was nice. It was real nice on the beach. I mean, it was cloudy. Uh, it was like sunny, partly, what, what the meteorolo meteorologists say, partly cloudy. It was partly cloudy, but like it was someone come out. I, I really did not think I was getting any sun at all. And then like I looked down at my arm and like this area of my arm always burns right in between here. I don't know why. And I was listening to this book and um, I was like real into listening to the firm. And I looked at my phone and it was like four o'clock and I was like, oh my God, I've been sitting out here for like over two hours. And... Um, so yeah, and I got a lot of sun today. I'm kind of surprised. Look, I didn't even do my hair tonight. I, just took, I told Alex, I said, if we're going to dinner, 
so more casual. I'm being real casual tonight. So anyway, so yeah, so um, but it was a great day on the beach. He was listening to music. He talked to his mom on the phone. He talked to some other people on the phone, and I was just listening to the firm all day. I would listen to some music, and then we uh, went up to the the rooftop pool and um, got in the water and whatever. And we were laying there drying off. At that point, it was like like five, five fifteen or something like that. I think we came back to the room like five thirty. There's this song. So I was listening to music at that point on my AirPods, and there's this song by Martin Garrix, and the song is called Starlight. I don't really know how to explain it to you. You'd have to like listen to the lyrics. Um, you'd have to listen to the song. But um, let me see if I can pull up the lyrics for you guys. But he played it in his set the other night. And so I was like, look, I, there was another song I wanted to know. What <clears throat> I love Martin Garrix. There was another song. It was funny because when we were there, all these people were like, oh my God, I've wanted to see him for years. And I looked at Alex and I said, we saw Martin Garrix the first time he ever performed at Ultra. Do you remember that? He was like 18 or 19. Martin Garrix was like one of the youngest DJs ever to go like international, if you guys know that or not. But anyway, so I was like, um, And so I was like, we were like, the, we saw him the first year he ever played. I think somebody brought him out, like Steve Angelo or um, David Guetta or somebody like that. But the lyrics are like, if I have to go, please don't tell me when. Need a little more time. I hope you understand. Um, like a guardian, you're watching over me through the depths of my own despair. I look up to the sky and find my peace. I know you'll be there. Um, and it goes, I'm going to start crying if I like start singing these. It says, Starlight, won't you lead the way down the river? Keep me afloat, keep me afloat. But anyway, if you listen to the song, I'm going to start crying for a second. I literally, we're sitting by the pool and I'm just bawling. I'm just literally just like bawling. And um, I've loved that song ever since it came out. But it's kind of like a real spiritual song for me. And, um, like, Starlight, to me, means, like, God in a song, you know? And, like, ever since the accident, like, every time I've heard that song, I've just been, like... It's like I sit on this fence, you know, of, like... Being so completely grateful for my life. And that, like, I'm still here, you know? And that, like... And if that's the case, then I need to, lit, like, be so grateful for each and every moment. You know, the ability to vlog and have a cup of coffee and be in a pool, be in a beautiful place with my husband and have people that love me. And, you know, and then the other side of that is that, like, like, all the guilt of the remorse, you know. And I have, like, all the answers, you know. Like, I have all the answers from, like, talking to everybody that I needed to talk to and hearing everything I needed to hear. And it's just like, I still, you know, it's like, I don't know. That song came on, I was like looking for it. And it came on, this video that I was watching, you can go look, if you put in Ultra 2024, you can put in like Martin Garrix, um, Griffin, Nora and Pure, Calvin Harris, Closed, Sunday Night, David Guetta, David Guetta, Calvin Harris, and Martin Garrix were probably the three best ones at the main stage. Um, you can like look them up online if you want to see what Ultra is like. Like see the they show the audience and people and stuff like stuff like that. But um, I was like sitting by the pool and I'm just like bawling my eyes out. Like Alex is like looking at me. He knows like. We've had a lot of conversations about it. I just like, you know, sometimes I have these moments where I just feel like it's like I have a string like attached to God, you know? And like in that moment, I feel like, why me? Why am I still here? But like at the same time, like I'm so incredibly grateful for my life, you know? I find as I get older, I mean, I have for a long time, but I find as I get older, I cry more out of joy.
You know, I know that crying like makes people uncomfortable sometimes. People either like are totally fine with it, like it doesn't bother them at all, or it makes people feel real uncomfortable. I'm kind of like at the point, like for a while, like when I used to cry on videos and stuff like that, and every once in a while people would like, you know, be like, um, like it, it's hard for me to see you cry or whatever, you know, like, and I get that, you know, I know there's a lot of people that, you know, until we entered therapy, my husband was not like a super emotional person, like he wouldn't cry watching a movie or not. Now it's like the floodgates have opened, he cries all the time, you know, he can sit there on the beach and listen to a song and start crying. Rufus DeSoul does that to my husband, and, um, but I feel like, you know, I had a friend of mine years ago that said to me, if I can't cry about it, it didn't mean anything to me to begin with. And I always think about that, you know, it's like, I'm not ashamed of crying. I'm not, like, I don't feel like it shows that I'm like a strong man because I cry or a strong person or anything like that. I just feel like I don't really give a fuck, you know, honestly. Like, if I need to cry, I'm going to cry. Like, I don't care who's watching. I mean, I'm literally at a pool, right? And I'm, like, sitting there on the chair, bawling my, I'm bawling my eyes out. It wasn't just, like, a, one tear. It was, like, I'm bawling listening to a song because in that moment, I'm just, like... I just felt God's grace and... and It was a God moment, you know, and um, I don't know, but those lyrics get me every time in that song. Um, I'm just even thinking about them, you know. So, after that, Alex kind of like looked over, he's like, okay, he's having one of his moments. <laughs> It's like part of a song or a movie or something like that. I can't remember. Oh, it's like a drag song. <laughs> Actually, that was the drag talent that Sasha Colby won from RuPaul's Drag Race that she won Miss Continental with. It's like in that, like she's pulling her hair and she says, she's, I'm having one of my moments. Anyway, um, so yeah, so then we came back up here afterwards and then Alex was like, I am so hungry, I've got to have a snack. We usually like order food on the beach and stuff like that, but we haven't been this time. And I got a coffee before I went down there and Alex took like, um, he had like some Cokes and stuff like that and he took a Coke down there so he was like, I don't need anything on the beach. So we didn't get anything on the beach. We didn't yesterday or today. So, um, he was like hungry so he made some stuff and he ate and he was watching, um, what do you call it? Grey's Anatomy. I, the other day I was like, maybe I should start Grey's Anatomy, but there's like 300 seasons or something. I'm like, there's no way that I'm going to catch up with Grey's Anatomy now. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I won't be watching Grey's Anatomy. There's so many shows I want to watch. So, oh, last night I finished Fellow Travelers. Balled my eyes out. This has been a really emotional trip for me. I don't know why. Um, emotional, like, in a really positive way. Like, I feel like this trip, like, happened at a really important time for me. And like, I'm not gonna get in the conversation, I've said what I needed to say, but I feel like I'm leaving behind the old and I'm letting in the new and I'm stepping in. Like I took a picture the other day, like on the, the, uh, the beach, and I put like, new tides rolling in, like old tides rolling out, new day, it's like a new day or something like that. And I feel like that, I feel like this trip has been like a rebirth for me. You know, like in a way, um, like even getting the tickets for next year for Ultra, knowing it's the 25th year, I don't know why, but like that was even kind of like, I mean, this has like always been our thing that Alex and I do together, you know, and to know like it's, we, we're going to have another year together to look forward to, you know, next year and something to count down to and look forward to, you know, I've got the summer coming up, the pool opening, and getting my hostess done with my neighbor across the street, and, you know, hanging out with Caroline and Tanya and Alex and I doing some fun stuff, and my husband's turning 40 this summer, you know, and I've got this new project that I want to do where I do, like, a lesson a day. I am going to do that. Like, that is a, is a you know, a, a project that I'm going to do. I haven't decided yet, like, if I'm going to post it, like, all over the place. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like, so I have a new project that I'm doing on my Peter Dust Up channel. It's a very easy project. It'll be fun. It's so funny because I haven't even hinted at what it was. And then somebody commented almost something identical to what I'm doing on my vlog last night. So I'll just tell you what they said. So it won't be like, 
big surprise with it. Well, no, I'm gonna save it. I'll save it and I'll share their comment when I do the video on my Peter Dustin channel. But I thought about this the other night. It's gotta be something that everybody can do if they wanted to do. So, um, so yeah, so I have this um, new project to move that. But that's real easy. That's a real easy project. It's kind of like camera stopped. Am I at 30 minutes already? It's kind of like the book club, but not, you know. Here, I need a thumbnail. <laughs> but not. That's what I'm going to call it. I won't remember that by the time that I'm done vlogging and uploading it. I can never remember. I always think of like a title while I'm vlogging. I was talking about titles the other day and I can never remember. And I stand there at my computer and I'm like, what's something that I said during the video that I can like pull a title from? <laughs> People are always like, where do you come up with these titles? I have no clue. It's just like one line I say in my vlog that I remember saying. I was like, pull it from that, something like that. What did I call what last life goes on or something like that? Or, uh,. I can't remember what I called it, but anyway. Do you guys remember that show from back in the day, Life Goes On? But no, this project that I want to start is, you know, I've always wanted to do like a meditation book. I think I want to do this first, and if this goes well, then next year I'll do like maybe like an affirmation book, like a positive affirmation, like a lesson a day. Very similar to like Linda Pacone's, um, uh, what's a book of positive quotations? <laughs> which I used to see at Meyer all the time, and I loved that when I would go to Meyer. They'd have it in their book section at Meyer. But I love that positive affirmation, that meditation book, positive affirmation book. Kind of like that. Not like really like a religious or spiritual one of there. It might have some spiritual aspects to it, but whatever. Just like a lesson I learned every day, you know? Maybe that, and that book will be called 53. Maybe I'll put out one book a year for the rest of my life. 54, 55, you know, forever. But I think going into the next year I want to do like some like video kind of like diary of like just very short you know I don't want it to be like a vlog like you know half an hour to an hour I just want it to be like a minute or two you know every day and I don't know if I should do it like on Instagram reels or TikTok or shorts or if I should do it on all three and just post them all three across the place um but I'm gonna start that on my 52nd birthday this year. So I'm real excited about that. Um, in case you're weird about people cracking their knuckles, I can remember like years ago, like I had a teacher that, teacher's kid said something to me about, you're gonna break all the cartilage in your hand. My dad is a hand reconstructionist and he said that's absolute, that's a, that's a, that's a myth that's not true whatsoever so anyway i can like when i would swallow gum and i'd say to my dad oh my god if you swallow gum like what they it just wants them because you digest it just like you digest any other food that you swallow that's what happens when you swallow gum that's what happens when we have a dad that's a doctor it kind of like loses all the myth you know but anyway so let me know where you think i should post it should i just post it one place or should i post it across the board i feel like if i cross post it across the board it's kind of saturation I feel like if I post it like just on my Instagram and TikTok and then be like, if you want to hear more of this, go check out my Peterson's channel and my vlog channel. It'd be kind of like, you know what I could do is whatever I talk about for like one or two minutes, the next day on my Peterson's channel, I could go in and talk about more at length with like a meditation or a life experience lesson or something like that. I don't know. I'm still thinking. I also want to have like, like a fun hashtag for it. Not just like a lesson a day, but like, I don't know. Do you guys have any suggestions for a cute hashtag for it? Like a title for that series? <laughs> Let me know. It's not gonna be like 10 minute vlogs. It's gonna be like literally like a minute or two, you know? When the tic I always said I'd never do a TikTok, but I did really like when, who's the guy that people compare me to? Leslie Jordan, is that his name? That passed away, the comedian, so funny. I loved him in Sorted Lives. Have you ever saw Sorted Lives? <laughs> when his mom, he goes to his mom's funeral. And he's in drag and he goes, Bet you didn't think I'd make it, did you, mama? <laughs> Olivia Newton John's that too. She passed away. I love her. Grace and Santa Dick. But he used to do those like TikToks where he would just, during like the lockdown stuff, where he would just like talk and talk and talk. Kind of like that, you know? But not because I'm not like Leslie Jordan. But anyway, just I want to do something different. I'm going to try something different. So anyway. So yeah, so then after that, after the pool, we came back up here, and then Alex made some food and snacks, and um, then he, he gets some leftover stuff, and then 
we brought leftovers home tonight too. We were so full. We both got salads and pasta. Okay, so anyway, so then he was watching Grey's Anatomy and then he was gonna watch an episode of Shameless and I said, are you gonna lay down? He was so tired. He was like sitting there watching TV. He was like this. I was like, are you gonna lay down? He's like, no. I go, well, I'm gonna lay down. So I laid down. I set my alarm for 7.40 and I got up and I like snoozed it. And um, I mean, I, I never really fell asleep, maybe for like 10 minutes or something like that. But I came out here finally at like 7.50 and I said, are you, like, are we going to go to dinner? Do you want to go to dinner or you just want to, like, stay in tonight? I could really, to be honest with you, I didn't really care. I wasn't even that hungry. And he was like, no, I want to go to dinner, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. I go, you're going to take a shower? And he goes, yeah, I go, okay, well, I'm going to go take a shower because I'll take a shower as soon as you're done. So I took a shower, got ready. And um, then he took a shower and then we got ready and then we walked down to Lincoln Road and we like picked up. he was like so tired and so hungry at that point and i was like you just ate all those snacks he's like i know but i'm like really hungry so like we like sat down and then he got really full really quick and so oh that's we walked by the ice cream store that's when i went and i took a video of it i should have got the ice cream then and we should have just skipped dinner because neither one of us really ate our dinner except for our salads so anyway we sat down at this Italian restaurant. I think it's called like Rosalini's or something like that. We've eaten there a couple times before, like when we come down here. It's okay, but we ate at this Italian restaurant two nights ago. Last night was the Versace place. Yeah, two nights ago, and it was really, really good. And like everything that we had, Alex compared to that, he was like, well, that other place was better. I was like, well, we should, do you want to, we could go down the other place if you want. He's like, no. He's like, I'm sorry, babe. He's like, I'm so tired. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> so anyway, we were both like, just like worn out. <laughs> Back in the day, we would have been like out in this gay bar called Twist or some drag show. We would have been out until two or three o'clock in the morning. Now we're like in the hotel room by 10, 30 or 11, you know, which is totally fine by me because I like to watch my shows and relax and put my, I said, I'm gonna go back and put my jammies on. <laughs> so I do too. I have these uh, little, can't really see, but it doesn't matter. I have these uh, camouflage, uh, they're like Abercrombie. I think I've got them at the outlet mall. And they never fit me for the longest time, and now they finally fit me. So <clears throat> I'm trying to use all this stuff that had tags on it that I never really got rid of, and now it fits me. So anyway, I found it. Oh my god, I had a pair of, I think I got them at the Meyer. This, what's the brand? Ash and something. I have a couple t shirts from there too. They're real cute. They were only like $9.99 or $7.99 or something like that from the Meyer. But Tony and I used to go there and I would buy all this stuff. Well, I have these, because I love sweatshorts <clears throat> that are like cut off, you know? And they're tie dye and they're like light blue, green, dark blue, yellow. They're real cute. And I never wore them because they never fit me. They were too tight. But well, now they're too baggy on me. It's so crazy. But anyway, I brought those down here too. I haven't worn them yet. Um, so, what was I going to say? Oh, so we went to, so yeah, so we're sitting there at dinner. I felt so bad. He was like so tired. He's like, babe, I am so sorry. He's like, I don't know why I'm so tired. He's like, but I can fall asleep right now. And um, he hasn't come out here, so he must be asleep. He must have gone right to sleep. Um, we were sitting next to this couple, and they were like this younger couple, probably like mid 20s, and they were like German. And um, they both got pizzas. And he like ate his, she was like laughing at him and stuff like that. They were really nice. It was really packed. Both nights it's been really packed. Oh, this, Alex and I were talking about this last night. So you know like people are always like spring break, spring break in Miami and it's like so crazy and chaotic and stuff like that. And then like the tourism board of Miami like really encouraged people not to come here for spring break this year. And I don't know if like we're in between like, cause we know some friends of ours who's like, how old are their daughters? Their daughters are like, 14 and 11 or something like that and they're going on a cruise out of here so they must be on spring break this week and next week or something like that which means we must be like the week in between come because when we were on ocean drive last night we didn't even realize that ocean drive is closed off first of all you can't drive by i don't know down it anymore i don't know why where we were at least it's closed off for like several blocks Cars used to drive by there and rev their cars and stuff like that. It was You couldn't even get down the street, walk down the, the sidewalk. It was so packed. And I said to Alex today, I was like, Ocean Drive was dead last night. And he was like, oh my God, you're right, it was. And I was like, and isn't it spring break? And he was like, I don't know when spring break is. And I was like, well, it was dead. 
And I was like, I know the tourism board encouraged people not to come out here for spring break, but I don't really think that would stop anything. But like, the bars were not playing music loud. There was like no DJ. There's usually DJs, you know, drink specials. There was none of that. I mean, it was dead last night. So yeah, I don't know what that's about. But anyway, um, so then we ate dinner, and then he got lasagna, and I got this penne spicy Ar arabiata pasta. When it came, it looked like there was like ground beef in it. And I, the guy came over, he was really nice. He was from Argentina, we were talking to him about being from Argentina and Alex from Venezuela and stuff. And, um, and Alex's mom had gone to Argentina, which was interesting because when we went two nights ago, the server that we had, she was from Argentina too. And we were talking to her about Argentina. And so anyway, I said to him, I go, is there like ground beef in here? And he's like, no, it's vegetarian. It's completely vegetarian. So anyway, I got that tonight and then it was funny, somebody commented on my picture, apparently last night when I was at um, the Versace house or whatever, Alex took a picture or a video of me and I'm like drinking water, you know? And like, um, somebody sent me this thing and they're like, people are gonna say that you're drink." I'm like, first of all, I'm sober for me. I ain't sober for nobody else. <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't, like the thing is people are, ask me often about like being a vegetarian. They're like, you know, do you ever like, I think I got this question on this Q&A that I was thinking about doing, but I think I'm gonna wait till we get back. Um, people are asking me like, do I ever like crave meat? I do actually. What's interesting is the first time that I was a vegetarian, I really, or the last time that I was a vegetarian, so this time I've been a vegetarian for over five years. I don't remember how many years I was before two, something like that, three. I've been, this is like the, the, the third time, the first time was short, the second time was longer, and it was a, around the time my mom passed away and after. Um, that time, I craved chicken fingers like crazy. This time, I crave a steak, like a filet. And people say to me like, oh, that's because you're not getting enough iron. It has nothing to do with that. I'm telling you right now, I know that. It's not like I wake up and I go, oh my God, I want red meat. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that all of my friends always want to go to steak houses for their birthdays and when we go, the smell of a steak sounds smells really really good to me I don't know what it is but it's only whenever we go to a steakhouse that's like the only time that I ever think about it like I don't sit, sit around and go oh, steak sounds really good you know um the only reason I get weird about it is because I don't want to get cross-contaminated and if you're a vegetarian you'll know what I'm talking about when <laughs> really so like I don't really like in my personal life like everybody in my personal life knows I'm a vegetarian but I'm not the vegetarian that's like preaching about you know why you should or shouldn't be people ask me all the time they're like why a why a vegetarian not a vegan because I don't want to cut out milk and dairy because I love cheese and because I'm a vegetarian not a vegan that's the choice I made and maybe at some point in my life I'll decide to be vegan. Maybe at some point in my life I'll decide to go back to eating meat. I really don't think so though. At this point, like I don't even really think about it honestly. It's just kind of like is what I, I mean I look through like a menu and I like just like, it's weird like when I look through a menu now because I can remember when I first was a vegetarian I would like so specifically like be like oh I can't have that, I can't have that. Now I just kind of like look through it and like I know like right away like what I can and can't have you know. And so I don't really think about it. The other thing is that when I was a vegetarian before the best you could kind of do was like, especially in Indiana, was like a dinner salad somewhere. Now, anywhere you go, there's a lot of vegetarian options or chefs. And I find that a lot of chefs or cooks are vegetarians. So they'll make you something. Like if you ask the server if you're like, hey, I'm a vegetarian, well, they're like, oh, no problem. We'll make you like butter noodles or, you know, what do you want, you know? They're really cool about that. So it's really not that hard. The cross-contamination is when something is cooked in, cause it's funny cause like every once in a while people will be like, um, Peter, did you know that blah, 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 whatever. And I can remember when I first became a vegetarian, I was so concerned about that. I was like, oh my God, people are gonna like be so upset with me online, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And uh, I remember talking to a friend of mine and she had been a vegetarian since she was 10 and she was like, I think 41 or 42 at the time. She had been a vegetarian for like 31 years. And I said something to her about it and she doesn't, she's not online at all. And she said, you're gonna learn as you go. Like being a vegetarian is not a, it's not a straight and narrow path. Like you learn as you go. Like I can remember one time I bought like all this Haribo candy that and, um, 
from Five Below because they have like every hair, like Haribo is a brand. It's like the, the jelly candies, you know? And I remember like I showed it in like a vlog or something and somebody said, do you not know that that has gelatin in it? And gelatin is bone, like bone marrow or something, not bone marrow, but bone something in it from animals. So I don't eat that anymore. But that was a learning experience for me. Like I didn't know that. Like Swedish fish is like one of the only like vegetarian like jelly candies like that. But everything else, like if you look at it, it has gelatin in it it's because it's like bone, it's not bone marrow, what's the word I'm looking for? Any other time that I'm explaining this to somebody, I would know exactly what I was talking about, but right now I don't know what I'm talking about, okay. Gelatin. That's why a lot of times why like I don't eat marshmallows, because a lot of marshmallows have it in it too. It's made from anima, animal collagen, usually from cows and pigs. It's commonly used to make capsules. And so like a lot of fast food is like, this is another thing, like fries from like McDonald's are like baked in, like they changed it for a while. And I think they changed it back because it's too expensive, but it's like animal fat, like lard or something. Some places don't. Like when I go to Burger King, if I get like an Impossible Whopper, I have to ask them to make it in the microwave because to be honest with you, I don't really care, okay? But I don't want to get cross-contaminated. And that's a, a, a way to be very pure about it. Because if you get cross-contaminated, what it means is, like, you have to remember, I have not eaten meat in five years. Not, like, any amount of it. If you get cross just imagine what that would do to my system, okay? Like, to be exposed to a large amount of meat and not have been eating meat for a long time. Well, cross-contaminated means, like, you get an impossible burger or beyond burger like even when we go to friends houses and they grill out like the last time that this, we did this was at caroline's house and mike actually made my beyond burger inside on a skillet and, and, and instead of on the grill because he was like i was like i just can't i can't get cross contaminated i'd rather just like eat hummus and chips and you know just what i used to do so when you get cross contaminated it's like if you like it's like if you go to a restaurant and you, they cook like a Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger, which is vegetarian, but they cook it on the same grill that they've cooked like a steak or a cheeseburger or whatever. Yes, what you're eating is vegetarian, but it's cooked on the grill where they just cooked a piece of meat. So you're probably gonna have some meat byproduct on that meat, which means you're cross-contaminated. Which, whatever, a lot of people don't care about that. I'm not like, I'm not that diehard of a vegetarian, whatever. I hope I'm not breaking anybody's dreams out there, but it's like, it's not that big of a deal to me. But the reason why it is a big deal, I mean, in theory, it's not that big of a deal to me because I'm doing it for me, right? The reason why it is a big deal for me is if you are a vegetarian, if you've ever been cross-contaminated, trust me, you'll know, okay? I can remember the last time that it, like, happened bad. It's happened a couple times since then. I think I've even talked about it on here. I can tell, like, it feels like my stomach starts hurting. It's cramping. But the last time that it happened really, really bad was we went to Benihana with Melissa and Jason. This has been a couple years now. And we all got fried rice. And I told the guy, I said, can you please make mine separately because I'm a vegetarian. I can't have it cooked in the same. Oh, yeah, 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 whatever. I got home and it was literally, like, I don't really know how to say this without TMI. It was both ends. I mean, for hours. It's literally, it's like, it works, it has to work its way out of your system. If, you, if you're a vegetarian, you've ever been cross-contaminated, say hell yes in the comment section. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's, it's horrible. It's literally, when people talk about having like a 24 hour flu, it's like 10 times worse than that. It's like your body has like this foreign substance in it that it has to get out. It is like, and you just, you like, it's like, you know when people talk about like the meat sweats and stuff like, I mean, it's like, it's so gross. It's like, I mean, so you do everything you possibly can to not have that, right? So today it's easier because a lot of restaurants know like how to prepare things. But like, if I go somewhere where it's questionable, like if we go to a steakhouse, I always get like, I get a wet salad with no bacon on it. And I get like a baked potato or something that I know they're gonna cook like in an oven on like, you know, whatever. I like, I do not even risk it whatsoever because I don't, there's, you know, or I might get a side or something that I know that they're not gonna make there or whatever. And I ask very specific questions, but they typically at steakhouses, it's so funny because in 2024, you would think that they would have like a lot of vegetarian options. One in Indianapolis I know does, but they'll be like, oh, we have great sides and whatever. But most, 
I've been to like two steakhouses in Indianapolis where they're like, oh, our chef is a vegetarian. He'll make you whatever you want. Which is really nice, you know? How did I even get into that? Oh, because I was asking the server tonight. I was like, is there like ground beef? He was like, no, it's completely vegetarian. It was really nice. In Miami, it's not hard at all. But there's like a lot of big like meat eaters, like, you know, whatever. Um, because it's, anyway, there's a lot of like meat, meat restaurants down here. And, um, so then we walked back and I went by the ice cream store. The ice cream store was absolutely packed when outside. Alex was like, I was like, I don't think I want my ice cream. I, I, I said, we were walking up to it and I said, I'm not really sure how bad I want this ice cream. And he's like, do you want it that bad? And I looked, there was literally like 20, I, I, I was like, I want to say 30. I was like, don't exaggerate. But I think there was like 30 people in line, literally. And like all the way out the door. I'm like, no, for an ice cream bar, no. And right around the corner was Hagen Dazs. And so we like paused outside for a second. And Alex is like, I'm just gonna wait out here. Well, as we were having this conversation, this family of like 10 walks up. There was nobody in there. I was like, I don't need ice cream tonight. I'm just having some other night. <laughs> I can get some Ben and Jerry's chubby hubby when we get home. He's like, are you sure, baby? He's like, you can have some ice cream if you want. He's like, we can wait. I was like, no, I, I don't want to wait behind 10. They're in there like all sampling ice cream. I was like, I can't do this. I don't even really like haagen that well, if you wanted the truth. I was just like, at that point, my mind was kind of set on ice cream, you know? So anyway, now we're back. Now we're back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Cheers. Guy, Dr. Pepper, always. Can I get a sponsorship? <laughs> Cheers from Miami. Sponsorship. Have I really talked for 51 minutes? God, it seems like it's been like 20 minutes. Anyway. So I gotta figure out which new show I'm gonna watch next. I went through like Amazon last night with my new stars membership. <laughs> I have so many shows. Oh my god, I'll tell you what show I want to watch. Has anybody watched the show? I was just looking on Netflix. Because I was like, is there anything on Netflix? Well, there was this new true crime documentary. Let's see what Nikki had to say real quick. Hold on a second. Tom Sandoval from Vanderpump Rules. His band is going to be real close to her house. She's like, like 30 minutes away. She better go. Nikki, you better go see Tom Sandoval. <laughs> you better wear your lightning bolt necklace for Tom Sandoval and uh, Raquel, now Rachel. Anyway, I'm kind of real over that show. It's so funny to think that like I binge watched 10, up, 10 seasons that I was so into it. Now I'm just like, you can hardly even make me watch it. Okay, this new show on Netflix. So I really wanted to watch this one. It's number two on best TV shows or top TV shows in the US and it's called Homicide New York. And it is, this isn't Sammy episodes. One, two, three, four, five, only five episodes. And it says detectives and prosecutors revisit their most challenging homicide cases in a chilling true crime docuseries from the creator of Law and Order. It looks fantastic. But when I was looking to see if there was anything new that came out, there's this new one, same new season, but recently added. And it's called Three Body Problem. And uh, it's number one in the U.S. right now. And it says, eight episodes, a close-knit group of brilliant scientists team with a dogged detective. Dogged? Dogged? <laughs> Where's my English major? Detective to investigate a series of bizarre events that reveal humanity is not alone. <gasps> I think I'm going to start watching that tonight. There's eight episodes. It looks so good. I've got so many shows to watch. I have to tell you, being down here and the weather being so nice, you know, and just feeling like kissing the past goodbye and stepping into my present and my future and just being like, life is good, you know? And, um, and as hard as that is, I think this trip has served its purpose for that. And I'm like so excited about just silly things. I was talking to somebody about this the other day about, you know, when you think your life is like really boring, like when you say to somebody else, my life is boring and other people think you have like a really exciting life. But like a lot of my life, I was gonna do a whole Peter Rosen's video about this. A lot of my life, I really 
like I would see other people that had really exciting lives or did these exciting things, and I would want to do that. And so I did that, and then, but I was never really happy doing those things, right? You know, and I just kind of fall back into what I loved. And now it's like I'm watching all these shows, I'm listening to these books, and I bought all these books. I've been reading this book while I'm down here, and you know, watching movies and hanging out with my husband and Tanya and Caroline and the pool's getting ready to open and it's the whole spring and summer of hanging out with my neighbors and everybody and it's like you know that might seem boring to a lot of people and it probably is but I don't really care to me it's very exciting my boring life is kind of exciting to me and you know it's funny because I know that there's a lot of people I get messages from people all the time that are like that's not boring like I love your life your life seems so cool to me right and so it's like what other people think is boring what you think is boring for your own life might be seem exciting to other people, but I think really the trick is stepping always into what you love, you know? Like, Micah Judy Mel from the book club, she's one of my dearest friends, she loves to crochet, okay? Now, I have tried to crochet, knit, latch hook a million times. She's been willing to teach me, okay? But way before that, when I was growing up as a kid, I get those latch hook things. I'm just, my mom needle pointed. I always want to needle, that's just not me. That's not who I am, right? So that's a good example of me seeing somebody else do something. You know, when we were in Arizona and Mel's got this list and checking off these numbers and she's got these patterns and stuff, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like, I want to do that. I'm not good at that. Like, my mom played guitar. I always wanted to play guitar. I'm not great at musical instruments, you know? And so it's really about stepping into what does make you happy, you know, what you do love. I can remember when I was talking to Mel for my first trip to Arizona, and she's like, I could never do what you do, like talk on camera. You know, we were talking about, I was talking to her about crocheting, she was talking about camera, she, or doing videos. She's like, I couldn't talk into a camera the way that you do. And I think it's just doing what makes you the happiest. And whether that seems boring to you or exciting, it doesn't really matter. I don't think really anybody has that exciting of a life. I think to everybody, their life, if you really step in and enjoy and just do what you enjoy, if you step into what you love, you know, I can remember my mom, like later in her life, you know, she, her, her bed was always just made so nice and her, her lamp, she always had it on like dim in the bedroom and she'd be in her bedroom, you know, and she would read and you know, when I would stop by there and you know, she'd be like, can you wait till I get my pajamas on and get in bed and then you can leave so I feel safe and you know, she'd always have like, you know, a cup of coffee, decaf in bed and that was like, I can remember seeing that and that was so cozy. In fact, my friend, we went to go visit our grandma before, this was years ago, this is when I was in my, with my ex in Seymour. And her grandparents owned a, like a trailer on the river. And I can remember, she was like, well, let's go out to my, you know, parents, like, or my grandparents, like, river house or whatever. And it was like literally like a trailer. There was like six trailers, like, in a row. And they were like those old school trailers, right? But we went out there and they had like, each trailer had like a bonfire. And they had all those Christmas lights, whatever. And so we like sat out there and we like did s'mores and the whole nine yards and all this kind of stuff. So much fun. It was right on the Muscatatuck River in Seymour, Indiana. And um, I remember it was just like August and it was hot and the mosquitoes were out and stuff. I can remember like the door to the trailer was open and it was like an RV trailer kind of thing. It was like, this is like where they stayed like on the weekends to be near you know, the, the river. And I remember like seeing her grandma in there. Her grandma was reading like some spy novel. She was like smoking a cigarette. And and there was like real low lit in there. And her grandpa was like sitting in the other part of it watching TV. And she was like drinking like a glass of lemonade, reading this book and smoking cigarettes. And I thought, oh my God, like that is the life right there. Like laying alongside the river with these Christmas lights out here. It's so beautiful, you know, in this trailer smoking a cigarette, drinking a glass of lemonade, reading some spy thriller, you know, at 11 o'clock at night. I mean, like, that is the life. Well, I'm sure to her that seemed very boring, but to me that was, like, so exciting. And I think it's really, like, and seemed very much like what I wanted at that time. I think it's really about stepping into what makes you happy. You know, it doesn't matter if that seems interesting or boring to somebody else. I always joke and say I'm such a boring person, you know. I probably, to me, I, I feel boring. Maybe to other people I'm not, you know, but I think the trick is stepping into what you love and what makes you happy, and that's what I'm trying to do more of, you know, and just embrace those things. So yeah, it's gonna be a good spring and summer. I'm really excited about it, and this trip has been really fantastic to, uh, be able to, for me to close one door and open another without, you know, I love the recovery saying we do not close the door in the past, nor do we forget it. You know, I think that's important. You don't ever forget, you know, what happened, where you came from.
you have, to, you, have to, you have to always remember that, you know? Keeps us in perspective, I think. And I never want to forget those that came before me and those things that happened. By the way, fellow travelers, bawled my eyes out the last episode. It was fantastic. It was unbelievable. I'm trying to rush this because I have like 35 seconds left until this is a 30 minute mark. I can see it. Fellow travelers, Paramount, gay history, AIDS history, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I bawled my eyes out. It was so, so, so good. The last episode. It's a little slow start, but it was so good. A couple people commented or responded to me or DM'd me and said that they like fell right into it right away. I did not. It was a little bit of a slow start for me, but all right, you guys, I'm going to get off here. I got 10 seconds. So if nobody else told you this today. I love you. I hope that you're having a magically amazing Wednesday and I will see you in my next vlog. Bye.